to know how to suffer. If at any time a deep sorrow, a searing doubt, or an intense pain overwhelms you and drives you to despair, there is an infallible way to regain calm and peace. In the depths of our being there shines a light whose brilliance is equaled only by its purity, a light, a living and conscious portion of a universal Godhead who animates and nourishes and illumines matter, a powerful and unfailing guide for those who are willing to heed his law, a helper full of solace and loving forbearance towards all who aspire to see and hear and obey him. No sincere and lasting aspiration towards him can be in vain. No strong and respectful trust can be disappointed. No expectation ever deceived. My heart has suffered and lamented, almost breaking beneath a sorrow too heavy, almost sinking beneath a pain too strong. But I have called to thee, I have called to thee O Divine Comforter. I have prayed ardently to thee, and the splendor of thy dazzling light has appeared to me and revived me. As the rays of thy glory penetrated and illumined all my being, I clearly perceived the path to follow, the use that can be made of suffering. I understood that the sorrow that held me in its grip was but a pale reflection of the sorrow of the earth, of this abysm of suffering and anguish. Only those who have suffered can understand the suffering of others understand it, commune with it, and relieve it. And I understood, O Divine Comforter, sublime holocaust, that in order, to, in order to sustain us in all our troubles, to soothe all our pangs, thou must have known and felt all the sufferings of earth and man, all without exception. How is it that among those who claim to be thy worshippers, some regard thee as a cruel torturer, as an inexorable judge, witnessing the torments that are tolerated by thee, or even created by thy own will. No, I now perceive that these sufferings come from the very imperfections of matter, which, in its disorder and crudeness, is unfit to manifest thee. And thou art the very first to suffer from it, to bewail it. Thou art the first to toil and strive in thy ardent desire to change disorder into order, suffering into happiness discord into harmony. Suffering is not something inevitable or even desirable, but when it comes to us, how helpful it can be. Each time we feel that our heart is breaking, a deeper door opens within us, revealing new horizons, ever richer in hidden treasures, whose golden influx brings us once more a newer and intenser life to the organism on the brink of destruction. And when, by these successive descents, we reach the veil that reveals thee as it is lifted, O Lord, who can describe the intensity of life that penetrates the whole being, the radiance of the light that floods it, the sublimity of the love that transforms it forever? From the Mother, Words of Long Ago, 1910